What's going on everyone? Great talent here and today the prey is going to be, yes, Mortal Kombat 10. Why not Mortal Kombat 11? Well, uh, in the light of the recent release of, of the 11th numbered game in the titular, <laughs> titular uh, over the top gruesome fighting game franchise, I decided to go back in time a little bit to 2015 and revisit Mortal Kombat 10, the predecessor to Mortal Kombat 11's epic uh, opus of a tale. Uh, so while I did already beat the story and unlock many of the items and in-game stuff in, in the crypt in Mortal Kombat uh, 10 um, and so on and so forth, I actually thought now would be a good time than ever to go back and uh, post my thoughts about you know the game and breakdown for people who are interested in taking you know Mortal Kombat X uh, out for a violently grotesque world. Uh, so before diving into the newest game, Mortal Kombat 11. Uh, so Mortal Kombat has been quite special to me over the years, um, even though I'm not the greatest fighter out there, uh, you know, uh, far from it actually, so uh, I really enjoy the fighting game mechanics as well as um, witnessing firsthand those sweet, sweet, uncut and gruesome fatalities. Uh, the stories also have evolved quite uh, immensely over the past couple of decades as well. Uh, while it may be a bit complex to follow, seeing as though the series creator and lead director, Ed Boon, uh, does a pretty unique job of progressing the storylines in each of the Mortal Kombat, each Mortal Kombat entry with interesting revelations and plot twists that keep you invested until the credits roll. Uh, I, I am reviewing this game also on a PlayStation 4, so I'll be using the PS4's control pad when I'm referring to the controls, etc. So, uh, with that being said, yeah, this is my second take and my documented thoughts of Mortal Kombat X or Mortal Kombat XL, whichever version <laughs> you're playing. Millions of years ago, Shinnok, one of the Elder Gods, turned on his fellow deities and invaded the Earth Realm. Raiden and the Elder Gods stopped Shinnok, locked him up in the Nether Realm. Others followed in Shinnok's footsteps, like Outworld's Emperor Shao Kahn, who was obsessed with conquering Earthrealm. So Raiden convinced the Elder Gods to enact the Mortal Kombat tournament as a way to even the odds, give Earthrealm a chance. Okay, and graphics are up first. For 2015, the visuals and engine that NetherRealm Studios was using was based off of the same one it was using for its Injustice 1 game at the time only much more enhanced to showcase the blistering realism and crushing blows of some of the moves on screen. For example, whenever you catch an opponent and say an X-ray grab, X-ray attack, you will actually see their entire musculatory and skeletal systems alike, with bones and muscles tearing apart and teeth breaking off at, <laughs> at times in full 1080p. Uh, also, whenever you're lucky enough to pull off the delectable fatalities, you may notice that there are severed limbs and body parts shredding in all the right places that adds more of a realistic feel to this already over the top of blood game of blood sport of a game. The character models are well designed enough and feature some pretty neat facial animations at times, uh, as well as good uh, fluid movements during the cutscenes, with a variety of outfits and attires to show off to if you like it. Environments in the maps are really well thought out as well. And, uh, some, uh, and some, if not most of the environments, feature interactive backgrounds, uh, causing you, your eyes to uh, constantly wander about, looking for all the little nuances and attention to details in whichever of the 12 maps, maps you're fighting on. The frame rate is 60 frames per second for the most part as well, allowing for some high octane and fast paced action to occur on screen, so fast at times that it will actually cause your brain to go in overdrive uh, to keep up with the fast paced mayhem. While the graphics as a whole are no way in the same level as com coming uh, out to, 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 the, uh, to the gate of Mortal Kombat 11 in 2019 here, for its time, while not perfect, they did its job just fine, allowing most of us to cringe and, and watch in awe as some of the most brutal fatalities and even brutalities play off on screen. Next up, gameplay and control. The game features a variety of gameplay modes that range from sim the simplistic single fight opportunities to classic tower modes with various character endings like back in the glory days to online modes which have tournaments and which is my, also my personal favorite, King of the Hill mode, which allow, which, you know, you, know, you can, uh, you and a ragtag band of friends uh, or randos can just hop into a room with a max party of eight and fight the winner of each match and try and dethrone them. 
Then there's actually the uh, Titanic uh, story mode, which is arguably better than any rendition of Mortal Kombat on film to date. It spans roughly a little over two hours in length of cutscenes, uh, a little longer if you include the actual matches. Uh, it has a number of over-the-top moments and some hilarious lines delivered by characters such as the uh, Jala Johnny Cage. Uh, the combat this time around spices things up with more with the x-ray attacks as you previously saw, which uh, is pretty much your super move in a fight that if you build up the third three special meters within the match, you can actually even the playing field if you get your ass handed to you by a freaking 10 year old who just met, you, you just met online who's already talking about banging your mom on the fresh linens 14 seconds into the match. There are also combat variations that allow them to pull off different combos and have varied move sets depending on which class you choose. For example, Scorpion has a Hellfire fighting stance, which still showcases uh, his more hellish uh, flaming moves. He also has a Ninjutsu fighting stance, where he focuses more on sword play and attacks. Uh, he also has a third variation where he can combine both flaming sword attacks into one. The choice is yours and yours alone, and, and uh, to decide which uh, play style you're, for character you feel most at home with. I myself prefer to keep switching it up at times, depending on who I was fighting or just what I was in the mood for at the time. Combos themselves are much easier to pull off too, and uh, there's actually even a robust training mode and skill set in the um, uh, you know in the menu that actually uh, can actually you know to teach you how to pull up the desired combo or special finishing moves. Although I still to this day cannot seem for the life of me how to figure out how to perform a fatality with that as a freaking up in the combo. You can even amplify some of your special moves by pressing R1 and pulling off a combo. It uses uh, one of your special meters, which allows you to pull off this extra sweet uh, move at the end of a combo chain, increasing the overall damage output dealt. Fatalities are plenty, and the 20-something character roster, not including the DLC, each fighter has about two fatalities and a slew of different brutalities to master. And if you're not expert at performing fatalities per se, you can acquire them easy fatality tokens in the crypt or by completing tower challenges, etc. Easy fatality tokens allow you to do a quick and easy fatality by holding down, say, R2 and pressing a face button, such as extra square, for example. Brutalities, on the other hand, are much more complex to do as most of them require an elaborate amount of feats to perform within the match itself in order to execute them. For example, to do the classic head punch off brutality, you need to not block for an entire match, duck a total of 20 times, and the last hit must come from, must come from an uppercut. To be quite honest though, most of the time when brutalities occur, they're at random for me, and that to me is pretty awesome, it allows the game to remain dynamic and unpredictable at times. Now moving on to the controls, I cannot emphasize this enough when I say fighting games in general to me are best experience on the PlayStation due to its intricate controller design and D-pad setup. Uh, I'm a little biased when it comes to the PlayStation controller due to this reason when choosing fighting games like Mortal Kombat X, uh, here's a prime example of having the most accessible and easy to use directional pad while well, it makes all the difference when trying to pull off fast and slick combos on the fly. And while Mortal Kombat X, like most other Mortal Kombat games released in the past 10 years or so, have a learning curve to master the more intricate and advanced series of combos and moves, having a PlayStation-like controller helps tremendously, at least for me anyway. Other than possessing a slightly moderate learning curve here, the controls feel just right with all the button mapping and play, uh, rightfully placed to ensure that uh, with enough practice and reflexes, uh, you can pull off one of the most wickedly brutal combos ever seen in a fighting genre. Next up, story, narrative, and campaign. So while the general combat of the game is airtight, the narrative excels even further of that uh, ta uh, and actually taking on simple matches and or towers and online tournaments, so it exceeds that. For the second time around, ever since Mortal Kombat 9 released in 2011, NetherRealm Studios with creative director and series creator Ed Boon at the helm, Mortal Kombat X delivers an action-packed blockbuster of a story that are pretty much is the equivalent of watching an explosive action flick like Die Hard with jokes and references aplenty, as well as the usual tales of destiny and saving the world, etc. Uh, the cast of characters is quite vast as well, ranging from the classics like Sub-Zero and Scorpion, uh, to Raiden and Johnny Cage and Sonya Blade, to even newcomers in the, like the, and kin of the classic characters such as Cassie Cage, daughter of Johnny and Sonya Blade, uh, Jackie Briggs, daughter of Jax. There's also new fighters who are related to Kung Lao and Kenshi, as well as some brand new players to the mix like Kotal Khan uh, and Devorah. The main story stands about two hours with the cutscenes, which spliced together make a feature-length film, but this does not include the actual time it takes carrying out the four fights per chapter in this 12-chapter tale. Overall, the story is definitely worth seeing it through as the story unfolds and ties into past events in the series and moves forward, and even as a cliffhanger ending that progresses the franchise forward in new directions as well. 
uh, that for what it's worth, I mean, is a lot more thought out than many other fighting game brands to date. I did not bring you here for treachery. Frost is strong, but lacks judgment. She cannot see the wisdom of peace. I will deal with her. I mean, what's not to love about hearing fists pound, flesh, bones and muscle breaking and tearing apart, intricate sounds of death, destruction and chaos transpiring on screen as you beat the ever-loving fucktar out of your opponents? Sound effects are as realistic as you would think. Uh, in regards to the fighting impacts the hand-to-hand -hand combat can have. Sounds from other sources such as magic and elemental attacts as well as projectiles all make do uh, and sound crisp as well. There's really no true musical score in the game, but instead it's overshadowed by the gritty and grueling sound effects uh, as well as some top-notch top, top -notch voice acting as well. Speaking of voice acting, there's also some hidden gems in the cast here as also. Troy Baker lends his uh, famous uh, gaming voice over to the cast as well as Kelly Hu and even Ashley Birch to deliver more than solid perform performances overall. Hey, wrapping things up here, moving on to replay value. Even with... The relatively short story mode, which lasts roughly three to four hours depending on your skill set and or difficulty, there's a plethora of content within Mortal Kombat X to find. There's classic uh, uh, towers to obtain traditional character endings, as well as exploring the crypt, uh, which this time around features the first person mode, um, with a sprinkle of jump scares, so just be wary of that, uh, that has you traversing catacombs, spider dens, cemeteries, and even Shao Kahn's lair, and the nether realms unlock chests with coins you obtain from fighting. The online mode will also hold your attention as well for a little while, as well as a variety of other modes and tournaments to partake in to keep you coming back for more. To unlock everything in the crypt, which I still haven't done to date, in tandem with uh, getting all character endings uh, from the tower modes may tally up to a total of time invested into this game roughly about 50 plus hours considering how very many friggin' chests there are to open in the crypt. Okay, now the overall score here, I'm gonna have to go and say 8 out of 10. Uh, honestly, I always enjoy a good Mortal Kombat romp, and Mortal Kombat X, even when revisiting the game, as I did four years later after it initially came out in 2015, uh, I can honestly say that the game still holds its own out there. The only flaws I can really state about Mortal Kombat X is that the roster of characters, while varied, is still missing some key favorites of mine over the years, and it just takes seemingly forever to unlock all those damn chests in the crypt. Too much for one lifetime anyway. I still have not unlocked crypts in four years later, uh, chests in the crypts four years later. Um, you know, there's just too, mu too much to do in terms of unlocking and grinding for that. Other than that, the graphics aren't the most groundbreaking, and some of the more advanced combos do take a little too long to master for my taste, but it shouldn't stop you from experiencing this gem. It's definitely worth picking up and checking out, especially as it is free right now with the, prescri with the subscription to Xbox's Game Pass, and it's pretty much dirt cheap all around right now, under $20 in most places, even 10 in some others. Uh, the story mode alone is truly worth it and will leave you quite satisfied in the end. So with that being said, I'm going to wrap it up here. Uh, let me know what you guys think of the video. If you liked it, give it a slam and like and that thumbs up. And why not subscribe? Because I'm going to be doing a lot more reviews like this as well as other documentary type videos and uh, trailer reactions as well. Uh, so uh, with that being said, you guys have a great day. I'll talk to you later.